The Artis 24 Pro is the latest professional tablet display from XP Pen. The monitor's 2K resolution with 20 express keys, two dials and improved calibration. The pens are now passive, with tilt control, and it costs £900 at the time of this review. It's a massive thing too, measuring at around 25 inches across and 14.5 inches from the top. The screen is 23.5 inches diagonally. I'll quickly mention I've been sent this by the manufacturer in exchange for this review. If you think that will have a significant bias in the making of this, then now's your chance to stop watching. That said, my words are my own and I'm not being a mouthpiece influencer spouting lines I've been fed. This applies to the other reviews too, and I hope mentioning this now rectifies that missed point. And with that out of the way, here's what comes in the box. The 24 Pro has a USB-C port, which simultaneously sends the pen data, but also receives the monitor input. But if you're as behind the times as I am, you don't have a USB-C port, so there's a USB-C to USB converter included. Plug that in along with the HDMI, and you have the traditional tablet setup instead. Depending on the wire tension, this can pop out, so you could tape it up or something. With the HDMI and USB-C to USB setup, you can still do 2K with HDMI provided your graphics card is good enough. Keep in mind, only specific kinds of USB-C can do the monitor thing. I believe it's called USB 3.1 with alternate mode, so it can switch between acting as a monitor and receiving input simultaneously. The 24 Pro has a couple USB hub ports on the side, so you can plug your keyboard and mouse in, which is actually just what I needed with this wide desk. You can use external hard drives and USB sticks too. Continuing the out with the old in with the new, there is no driver CD included. You have to go online and download it off their website. Sorry hermits. But then again, how are you watching this video? The driver worked right away for me after installation, although I always restart just to be safe. The Artist 24 Pro has Quad HD resolution and it looks nice and crisp. QHD just means 1440p or 2K resolution if you're wondering. While 1080p is a little too fine for me for small displays, the Quad HD works wonderfully on this 24 inch display. If a monitor this size was 1080p, it may in fact be a little too pixelated, so 2K is a nice balance. Until the hardware to render 4K gets fast and cheap, and less people are watching films on their phones, I'm happy to stick with 2K for now. My current work computer's getting a bit long in the tooth, and the GPU can only go up to 1080p. For those in the same boat, this tablet still looks fine at 1080p, just a little blurry. For the close-ups, I'm switching to another computer that can do 2K, so as not to give the wrong idea for the monitor's clarity. Once the brightness is set to 20 and up, it's bright enough to have an accurate understanding of your colours in usual lighting conditions. The colour accuracy measures at 90% Adobe RGB, meaning it should cover sRGB's gamut coverage just fine. I notice Hueyon sneakily calls it 120 sRGB gamut, which I'm guessing is practically the same thing. One thing I found disappointing was that there appears to be a bit of vignetting on the sides at lower brightness settings. Not as noticeable at high settings, but still there. Now it's not disastrous because usually software's GUI takes up the sides and I work in the middle of the screen anyway. The colour hardly shifts at all facing the monitor at different angles. It's nice for watching films and YouTube at this size too. In the context of animating, there's barely any smearing or trailing darks, even if it's black outlines over a grey background. If you've seen my Artist 16 review, you may expect me to tear the anti-glare film off, but the film's texture isn't nearly as distracting this time because of the sheer size of the screen. 
I suppose the size ratio between the pixels and the film's texture is different enough that they don't visibly interact creating that rainbow noise. The 24 Pro has the same kind of menu and settings controls as the 22e Pro, except now, instead of buttons, we have capacitive touch controls. The Artist 22e Pro's buttons were a little stiff, and the Artist 16's were clicky, so this is possibly XP Pen's way of addressing those problems with the new technology. Whether I trust these more than the previous controls is down to the test of time. They don't like sweaty fingers. For the time being, I like that you don't have to push with any weight to get through the menus, and the absence of clicking will delight the phonophobes. The stand is the most heavy duty from XP Pen yet, with no chance of the monitor being tilted over by pressing on the corners. It also has these little wheels to minimize the chance of scraping your desk. Because the monitor's so heavy, you will have to be more deliberate about adjusting the stand, as it doesn't click back when you let go all the time. Perhaps the most important thing about not just the pen, but the whole tablet, is that the pens are now passive. This means they don't contain a battery that has to be charged. Not that the batteries gave me any trouble with the Artist 22e Pro, but in time, batteries age, so to avoid that problem in perpetuity is fantastic. The pressure feels nice and smooth, naturally flowing from thin to thick with no jumps. Right-clicking can cause the pen to jump to the side a bit or break up the line. Setting right-click to no action doesn't prevent this, so sorry to those with a firm grip like me. Like a pencil or bent pen nib, I've set my roughing brushes to be wide and light while the pen is tilted and thin and dark when the pen is vertical. This is extremely helpful for it differentiates the big forms and the little details all without having to touch the brush size button. The tilt doesn't follow the pen rotation axis, so it's not quite as flexible as a pencil, but still very welcome. It really adds new depth and grit to my artwork, since I can get it to affect how Clip Studio Paint's textures behave as I'm drawing. The way the pressure behaves differs from program to program. For instance, Clip Studio Paint and Paint Tool Sci both have perfectly smooth transitions from thin to thick, reacting quickly. But the ancient Macromedia and Adobe versions of Flash seem to refresh the pressure at a slower rate once releasing the pen. I'm going to blame the software for this, as I've never had a good time with Flash's brushes, even with Cintiqs. If you're doing quick brush strokes while tilted, you can't immediately go to full pressure. It seems to react a little slower. Included's this funny little screw clamp. If you pop out this rubber bit covering the hole on the tablet, you can then screw the clamp in and hold the pen there. Since the 22e Pro review, I became an Express Key convert, making use of the 16 buttons. The 24 Pro takes it up a notch with 20 buttons and two dials, and I'm almost having trouble making use of all of them. The ergonomical benefit of the Express Keys and dials is that it spares your elbows from having to rest on the table. Now you can put the keyboard to the side, bring the tablet forward, and the Express Keys can, for the most part, take the keyboard's place. The dials are similar to Express Keys. They're not analog, adding or subtracting values like potentiometers or knobs. Instead, one click to the right is like pressing one key, and one click to the left is like pressing another key. An immediate use for the dial that springs to mind is canvas rotation. If you want the canvas rotation to match the dial, set the intervals to 15 degrees per click. Now one full rotation of the dial equals one rotation of the canvas. Very handy for those hard-on-the-wrist curves. Speaking of comparable features to an animation desk, by far the best use of the new dials for me is flipping through in-betweens and rolling through the drawings. This is such an upgrade from using either the keyboard, mouse, or even the express keys. With those, you either have to repeatedly press a button or try to drag the tiny frame scrubber. With the dial, you can speed right through a scene if you want to. I really like them. 
the driver offers all the ways you'd expect to customize the tablet settings. Here's the two pen buttons. Function keys allow you to assign any key, and there's the very useful B slash E mode for programs that don't detect eraser mode. You can switch between the brush and eraser this way by alternating between the two keys. It would have been nice to have this option for any two letters, also available for the express keys. Very often there are pairs of tools you alternate between when doing digital art, and for them to share the same button or express key could maximize the use of the buttons even further. Alongside the pen's new passive nature, another improvement is in the calibration. With the 24 Pro, the distance between the screen and the tablet's surface is significantly less than the last two tablets. The reduced parallax error means you can look at the whole drawing while doing cleanup or in-betweening without having to zoom in. It would be nice to have the option for more calibration points like on the Artist 16, just for that extra bit of accuracy. The Express key settings are much the same as the 22E Pros. You can save different settings based on which program is open, which is a godsend, but now we have the two dials here in their own tabs, which is where you'd set your key presses for each direction. Also there's scroll, for programs that can only zoom with scroll for example. What you've seen is the Windows experience, but there's also drivers available for Mac and Ubuntu. I'm particularly happy about Linux being given some attention. Windows 10 fills me with foreboding. Compared to the 22E Pro, the 24 Pro is certainly another step up. And while you have to pay what feels like a premium for the upgrade, it's one that's worth it if you reckon with your skills it will pay for itself. It's like the keen photographer, who may or may not be freelancing, but still buys a fancy camera because they want what best matches their skill level. The tilting brushes add an extra human element to my digital sketches, and the dials have made animating in Flash less of a nightmare than it was. There's hardly any fighting against the parallax error between the screen and the pen, and the 2K resolution's a pretty upgrade, especially complementary to my cinemascope obsession. Wacom has released a 21.5-inch entry-level 1080p tablet for £870. It has no express keys or dials, and the colour spec only mentions NTSE. So if you wish not to cheat on your keyboard, and want the safe official brand behind your purchase, it might be worth thinking about. In any case, it's great that there's other brand options now, when originally there was only the one, which charges a fortune. Now there are concerns about these new companies' quality control and consistency, but that's why we have the internet. We can discuss our own long-term personal experiences with a particular brand and the company support, and come to our own conclusions which are the best value for money.